July 17th, Sunday at the West End Gun Club. I woke up late. I was going to come out to the range and shoot, but it didn't really matter today as far as what time I got here because I actually wanted to just try out the lab radar with other shooters on the line. So Sunday mornings aren't as busy as Saturday mornings, so I figure I'm just going to hang out here a little bit up until at least uh, 10 or 11 while some other shooters on the line to see if the lab radar gets affected by it. And that's the one thing I wanted to test and I couldn't test last Wednesday when I recorded uh, my little testing because obviously I was the only one on the line because no one comes out on a Wednesday morning or hardly anyone shoots on a Wednesday morning here at Western Gun Club. So anyway, uh, that's all I'm here for. And to test some other loads, just to re-verify things, I adjusted my scope again, like by 0 0.1, 0 0.2 mil rads. And uh, want to try some IMI ammo that I got and just do a little messing around. But anyway, that's all I'm doing this morning. So today I went to the main range to test out the lab radar with more people on the line. I figured come out on a weekend morning when more shooters are shooting because everyone comes out on the weekends and uh, to see if the lab radar would get any false positive. I did get a couple, um, actually one definite. I was I had it set up had it as I had it last Wednesday as far as on the bench, sensitivity set to highest, uh, six inches away from muzzle offset. And apparently when I was uh, in the middle of just like writing my data down for the shot, it registered a shot from someone else and I was quite surprised it actually registered it and tracked it on radar so apparently they were within that cone of fire next to me and they were and nobody was on the adjacent benches I think the nearest guy was three down and three down left so it was pretty interesting how that it tracked I guess the radar cone was that was that wide at that at 100 yards that it picked it up it not only did it trigger and it picked it up so I just dialed the sensitivity down to two and uh, that pretty much solved my problems so I guess it's just some a little bit a little thing you need to be aware of with live radar is that you can actually st get false positive triggers from s another gun. And speaking to the range master who first introduced me to the live radar, he actually said he his, one of his friends had got one four months back, and they were testing it with muzzle brake to firearms. And the muzzle brakes would literally, if it was too close, it would reset the unit, and you'd have to power it on again. And so muzzle brakes, you have to be aware of that. So I guess. The, the manual says you should probably have a, the muzzle far forward, the crown far forward of the of the of the lab radar unit, which is obvious. But you probably have to sens set your sensitivity down a little bit more, so it's not as sensitive, uh, so it doesn't doesn't I guess the the unit doesn't wig out. But other than that, um, today it worked pretty well, and I had no other issues other than that one or two false positives. I had one false positive where it actually triggered and picked up that round and tracked it. I deleted the, that shot from my series. No big deal. The second false positive where it is it tried to reach, it, it threw an error because it got triggered by something but didn't track a bullet. So, so in two cases, it got, it got false triggered by someone else's firearm. So just sense, set your sensitivity down and you'll be fine. But that's pretty much the only error I had today. Um, so that's a little addendum I'm going to make to my, my review that I posted on my blog. If you haven't seen on my blog at okfj.net, I, I do have a review of the lab radar that I wrote, uh, wrote up this past week. But I'll, I'll amend that and add this information to that, to that, uh, to that article. And as far as uh, usage of the lab radar, it's great. There was actually another guy on the firing line who had the lab radar, so um, he's quite happy with it. He just got his too. So I think lab radars are going to start becoming more prevalent. I mean, there's a couple of guys on the end of the line shooting their, uh, their chronographs with optical-based chronographs. But I anticipate more people are going to catch on, and they're going to realize that the benefits of using the lab radar versus uh, a optical chronograph because these guys are sitting around waiting 
for the line break because they had to go set up and then I guess they they wanted to readjust it for another gun because it was I think too too far back or too too low and so they had to wait for the next line break which here they have they run like 20 minute or 30 minute line breaks depending on what time of day it is so do you really want to sit there on the firing line waiting for line breaks constantly just to get your just to get your chronograph set and reset and reconfigured so lab radar set it on your bench or right in front of your bench with a tripod you don't have to wait for line breaks due to safety and you're done Anyway, that's it as far as Live Radar is concerned. I'm happy with it. Again, if you want more information on Live Radar, check out my blog. I have a write-up on that. You'll get a lot of information from that. I came out to the 22 rifle range, which is the quietest bay out of all the bays on the weekend because no one's here literally shooting. I wanted to do a little breakdown or an update uh, on video for, of the Remington 700 Precision Rifle Project that I started. Obviously, I did uh, the introduction to this rifle when I first got it, but it's gone through several iterations that I blogged about extensively on my blog at okfj.net. So if you want to read that information and see more photos, definitely check my blog. But anyway, here's a, an, a quick update as far as the rifle's concerned. It was, if you recall from previous videos or whatnot, it was a Remington 700 police model or a barreled action. I put the Vortex Razor HD Gen 2, it's a 4.5 to 27 by 56. That scope was put on the Badger Ordnance Base with the sequence precision rings, uh, Trigger Tech Trigger, and then uh, it had the original HS Precision stock that came from the factory. Obviously, as you can see here, I no longer have that stock. I have the chassis system. This is ATAICS. This is their uh, this uh, the latest iteration of their original AICS. Uh, it's got the pale brown or what they call pale brown. Um, so I have this new chassis system. I'm currently using just the, uh, the factory mag and I have a bobsled for it. But then um, on top of that, I, the other modification I made was I had a Badger Ordnance bolt knob put into place. This is their Badger Ordnance tactical knob, so, so to speak. I had this installed by Randall Roush in uh, Los Angeles. He's uh, also known as AR-15 Barrels on various forums. He has AR-15Barrels.com and he also has 700Barrels.com. He has a bunch of other domains, but his, uh, he does work on pretty much all types of rifles, including pistols, but he's well known for his rifle work. Anyway, I just drove out to his place on a uh, Friday afternoon. I had him, I, I went over there, uh, sat there, and he pretty much got the bolt on in, in less than 45 minutes or less than that. Uh, all he does is he cuts off the original bolt, bolt knob, TIG welds a threaded piece on here, and, and then he... Uh, Puts on the threaded uh, threaded stud, a Loctite satin or threaded stud, two welds a threaded stud, and he threads the uh, bolt knob on there and he, with red Loctite, and that's pretty much it. Pretty quick work for him. Uh, it cost me forty bucks, I think, and he had that done in less time it took me to drive out there, one way. Anyway, this is the uh, the status of my gun right now. As far as this rifle is concerned, I'm still using 41 grains of AR comp with a 175 grain Burger OTM tactical bullet. I was messing around with the Varget powder because I got some of it at a local gun store known as Bullseye Sport and, uh, in Riverside. And I thought I had a load for this, but I tried it today and, and I'm still getting some large groups. And granted, I'm still, I'm, I admit that I'm a terrible bench shooter and again, I can't shoot bipod and a rest off a bench but I figured my groups would be a little tighter than that and I'm getting some weird stringing so I'm not sure if I'm happy with it. They average about 2750 feet per second and my uh, with the lab radar I have confirmed and my 41 grain AR comp load with the 175 burgers hits 2650. So I'm pushing 100 feet per second faster with the Varget load. Even if I drop that down to full grain to 43 I still I think that was averaging 2700 and the groups weren't all that great. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that. Uh, do I, I would like to shoot Varget if I can, if I can get higher, higher velocities, but still get good accuracy. I may go ahead and risk the 44 grains, try it out a little bit more and actually shoot at a distance, maybe take it out to Pendleton and shoot a, sh shoot a 600 mid-range match with them to see how they hold up. But if they can't, if I get, can't get that to group well in this gun, beyond 2700 yards, or 2700, 2700 feet per second, I may as well just stick with AR comp because I can get AR comp a lot easier than Varget right now. And I actually recently picked up an eight pounder of AR comp from Phillips Wholesale out in Covina. So I've got plenty of, plenty of AR comp, so I might just stick with that, that, that powder and know that I'm pushing at 2650 feet per second out of a 26 inch barrel. 
But other than that, that's the status of this gun. Um, I really don't think I'm going to do any more updates to this gun as it is right now. This is pretty much going to stay the same. I might get an Atlas bipod. I'm still debating on that. I've been running this Harris bipod for for several years now. Um, I've had this. I've had this. I've had this bipod since 04, 03, or whatever. When I had my when I first got my Savage 308, that was like my first 308 bolt gun. But uh, Atlas bipods are like 300 bucks, and it's kind of a lot. Uh, Granted, I spend money like that on other things like the lab radar, which cost me 500 something, 520, 550. But you know, it's it's how we decide to spend our money, right? It's not like how much we spend, like it's where we spend it. Um, but other than the Atlas bipod, I really don't think I'm gonna do anything else um, to this gun until I want to rebarrel, which I'm gonna go 6.5 Creedmoor probably. Um, or 260 ram tin. I'm still. I'm, I'm probably gonna go 6.5 cream more. Or I might just build another gun. I'm. I'm really thinking about building another bolt rifle. <clears throat> I know I was a proponent of 6.5 cream more when it first came out back in 08. I think 2008 was when that bullet. 2007 is in the late 2000s <clears throat> when that round was first introduced. And as much as I was promoting it, I kind of when I bought when I built this or put this gun together, I just went with 308 because I've already tooled up and I wanted to get up and shooting with a new rifle. And so I already had everything going. I already had my components, dies. I'm I'm so I'm like so prepared to shoot you know to to reload for 308. I just said you know let's just go with 308. So maybe I'll build another bulk gun. Um, maybe at the end of the year or next year I'll start, maybe I'll start a 6.5 Creedmoor project or something else. But I'm satisfied with this. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it as far as this gun is concerned. So I'm leaving the range right now. I didn't really do too much recording um, on the firing line at least because. A lot of people, there's a lot of people on the range the weekend, obviously, and so there's a lot of shooters, and people get weary when there's video cameras around, and so I don't like to, like, you know, especially gun owners, these guys, you know, who knows, like, their attitudes, so, anyway, it's not, it's a lot less recording the firing line than it would usually do on, when I'm on the weekday, because when I'm by myself, or there's hardly anyone around, or if I'm using a private bay, but uh, since I was shooting my uh, Remington 700, I didn't want to use a private bay, which only goes out to about 50 yards, if not a little bit more, like 65 yards. Anyway, um, did what I need to do this morning, testing the lab radar with uh, other shooters around. So that being said, uh, this is kind of the end of the range vlog. Um, it's July 17th, Sunday. Not sure when I'm gonna be out to the range again. Um, I don't really need to do any shooting. I'd like to get back on my AR again, but I just need to find time. I need to take a day off sometime um, next month, so maybe I'll come out to the range next month on a weekday and do some AR drills and whatnot. Do some pistol stuff, which I haven't shot my pistol in a while either. So, anyway, that's the end of the range vlog. July seventeenth, sun July seventeenth, Sunday, West End Gun Club.